Welcome. Um, my name is Chris Perkins, and this is SiteGrinder, one hint at a time. And today, we're going to be start looking at columns. So to understand columns is uh, mostly to understand their need. Um, this particular Photoshop document has two particular layers on it. Um, it's got the, the uh, picture and some text above the picture. And let's go over and see how that builds out. Builds out like this, so it looks great. But look what happens once we change the text size. Um, once I start changing the text size, or later if you want to think about adding more text in the content manager, that might be more likely what you might do. Um, notice that the text is coming underneath the picture. It's not moving the picture, and the, the two are overlapping one another. And this is rather undesirable. This is what columns address. So a column is like a page size layer that we saw earlier. A column is a boundary layer, and you place a column below the layers you want to be grouped in a column, and those layers that are within the column um, will maintain their relationship to one another. So for example, I have a, uh, uh, a little uh, layer here, and I'm just going to, uh, I like to, columns are not normally visible on the page, so I like to use pink or orange uh, to indicate columns just so, just so I can easily see them. And there I've uh, placed a, a, a layer here, boundary layer, and I'm just gonna name this uh, something dash column. And dash column tells SiteGrinder I want this to be the, uh, the boundary for, for these particular groups. If you don't, now columns are normally invisible on the page. We'll see exceptions to this in, the, in future videos. Um, but if you don't want to see it at all, um, I recommend just turning down the fill uh, to make it, uh, uh, you know, turn it all the way down to make it invisible or, or do as you will. All right. So now that this page has a column, let's see what happens when we, uh, when we build it. So we'll just open up SiteGrinder. Don't take any warnings, that's good. And we'll just go ahead build this. There we go. So let's go ahead and reload this page. And now, look what happens when the text sizes. When I change the text size, or if I were to add or subtract text from the page, um, this little picture moves up and down relative to the text. It's keeping its relationship away from the text. And so that's what we want. Columns are great for making pages that are robust, that can survive edits from your, your, from your users, um, that you know, change and all these sorts of things. So that's the basics of a column. Now to understand the basics of a column is, is one thing. To understand um, exactly when you should and shouldn't use it is another. And so I'm going to look at just some other designs. We're not going to be working on the details or just sort of uh, glance at them. Uh, on the left here, um, you can see a layout um, that was done, I think, by uh, Richard Carpenter of HV Designs. He made this uh, PSD available um, for people to you know, use. And uh, um, so it's got a nice layout here. If we were going to put some columns on this design, where would we place them? Well, to me, the design sort of looks like it's split uh, into two columns, a left column and a right column. But the top part, you can see that sort of uh, gray part of the top and the, um, the white part down below. Those two columns really probably don't cross all the way around that. So I really think that at minimum, if we were using columns, we might make a column uh, here and we might make a column uh, something like here, probably these two areas. Um, or perhaps the uh, uh, perhaps that first column, maybe it might be more like include the things down below, but something like that would be the columns that we might consider using on this page. If you've got a lot of graphics, um, they you don't have to worry about them being in a column so much because graphics can't change size, and uh, so you don't have to worry about them. You would want to make columns to accommodate uh, text. And menus, obviously, um, X media because X media can change. Blogs, obviously, blog will change. 
And for your gallery elements, this will depend on what gallery controls you choose. So panel sheets, thumb sheets, view sheets, these things all may be changing sizes or may not be changing size, depending on how you set them up in the design manager. Obviously, we haven't looked at the galleries yet, um, so we'll talk about them later, but just keep that in mind. Let's look at another design. Uh, this is one of the sample files that Media Lab uses. And uh, once again, like, well, if we're putting a column on this one, where should we put? Well, this one clearly, to my mind, looks like a one column design. Um, that's pretty clear. And notice that all the stuff at the top isn't, doesn't really, it's mostly just graphics and some buttons and things. These things aren't going to be changing size and moving things around, um, nor do we really want them moving around. Probably, if we were using this particular a column in this particular design, we would place it down here, something like that, is where we would set up this column. The footer area is its as its own thing. We'll be seeing that in um, a few videos from now. And uh, so the footer we don't worry about, and the columns should um, not extend into the footer. So. Anyway, hopefully this has given you a little food for thought, what columns do, how you might use them. We saw a couple different designs, and we'll be looking more at columns in the next few videos. Thank you.